Do you want to make your renders look absolutely amazing with cool glowing effects and beautiful colors? Well, you probably need to learn about the compositor. Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Abbott. And today's video is an intro to the compositor. This is a beginner's tutorial, but it's not meant for complete beginners. So a good understanding of the interface is important. Also, the compositor uses nodes. So an understanding of the basics of nodes will certainly help. If you struggle with that, then do check out my nodes for noobs playlist links in the description. And if you like what I do, then do check out my website for more great content. So first of all, what is compositing? Well, it's taking your rendered image and adding effects to it. You can do this with animations as well, because animations are a sequence of still images and each of those images will have the same effect added to it that you add in the compositor. So I'm in Blender 2.93.4. My shortcut keys are displayed down the corner here and I've set up a really basic scene. I've got my camera pointing at these objects. They're all sitting on a simple floor or plane. My spheres have a subdivision surface modifier with two levels, the same as my monkey. And these cubes do have a bevel modifier, but that doesn't make too much difference. There's also another sphere around the back there. So I'll just move my camera slightly so you can see that easily. I'll talk about the shading quickly. So I'll go to the shading workspace and I'll turn on material preview mode. Now it looks all flat and a bit rubbish. That's because it hasn't got any of Eevee's special effects on. So if I turn on the ambient occlusion and you can turn this up and down depending on what you need. I think somewhere around there looks quite nice. You've got the bloom as well to add a bit of glow to our emissions and you've got screen space reflections there and it looks quite nice. I'll just quickly go through my materials. So we've got some metal spheres with no roughness and full metallic. The monkey is full metallic with a bit of roughness. These are just sort of plastic. So they're no roughness and no metallic and the emissions. If I click on those and scroll down, you can see the emission is a color and it's a strength of 10. And in fact, I think it's better if we change the base color as well. I think that looks a bit nicer. They look orangey because that's what happens when you brighten up red towards white. It goes a bit orangey. Okay, so that looks great, but it is still EV, so it's not quite realistic. It doesn't look bad, but let's go across to Cycles and turn on Render Preview. Now Cycles certainly has better reflections and these emissions are actually emitting light. So it is certainly better from a realism point of view, but it doesn't have those cool looking effects that EV does. So how do we go about getting those? Well, that's where compositing comes in. But before we go to the compositor, I just want to say that I have got an HDRI in the background. That's why you're seeing these nice reflections. So if I go across to the world, you can see an HDRI there. It doesn't really matter which sort of HDRI you use. So if I change this to a different one, let's say this one here, that might even look nicer. The other problem we have is this noise at the bottom here. And of course you can change that with the samples over here. It does slow it down somewhat. I've turned on adaptive sampling, but I've not turned on any of the denoise options. We can do that sort of thing in the compositor. So let's go across to compositing. So hopefully you'll see something like this. If you don't just tick on the use nodes option over here and we've got all our render layers and things down here. Now, if I tick on something like mist, it will add it to the render layers here or normals and it will add it to the normals, but I'll untick those and leave it as it is for the moment. Now we're not seeing anything because we haven't rendered our image. So make sure you've rendered your image with F12 or you can go up to render and render image. I've got an RTX 280 Ti, so it goes relatively quickly. And for now I'll close this down. Now it might pop up here for you. That's what it's supposed to do. But if I click on the backdrop, then it kind of kicks it into gear, but the backdrop isn't actually appearing. That's because we haven't got a viewer node in here. You can go shift a and go to the output and choose viewer, but there's a much quicker way and it involves an add on, but you'll need that for the rest of the tutorial. It makes things so much easier. Go to edit preferences, choose add ons and then type in node. And there's the node wrangler there. Make sure that's ticked. It's really helpful for the shader editor as well. So close that down. Now I can just hold control shift and left click on this and it brings up my viewer node. And then we've got this background image here and then different things we do to this will update in the background. If I press V, I can zoom out of it and alt V will zoom back in. Now this will look a bit confusing for the tutorial. So I'll turn it off for now and I'll just bring out a new window here and change this one to the image editor and bring up my render result just there and zoom out just a touch. Now you'll probably want to just stick with the background and turn it off every now and again if you need to. But I think this is possibly easier to see for the tutorial. So I don't actually need my viewer node at the moment, so I can delete that and I can always get it back by control shift left click 
and that will bring it back. Okay, so how does the compositor work? Well, it goes in the same way as the shader editor from left to right. So anything we put in here will kind of affect the image here and we can add all sorts of cool effects to this to give it that sort of Eevee look, but with the realism of cycles. Of course, any effect that you add is taking away from the realism, but that's the price you pay for that sort of coolness. Like I was saying earlier, you can add things to your render layers down here. So for example, I can add the denoising data here and it brings all this up. For this particular image, it doesn't actually need it because the denoise node works absolutely fine without these. But if you've got something like a bumpy object and the denoising isn't doing it for you, you can try just denoising the normals or separating the albedo out and so forth to play with that denoising data. If I add anything like ambient occlusion or emission, for example, because we've got emissions in here as well, you can see AO there and emit there as new layers, but I have to re-render in order for them to be seen. I'll make this window a bit bigger here. So here we've got the composite and here we've got view layer. And if I go to view layer, we've got combined and we've only got that depth pass and that's it, which we already had ticked, which is that Z pass there. So the emission and ambient occlusion aren't in these rendered layers here. So if I press F12 again, I've re-rendered my image. I'll close that down. Now, if I go up to the top here under combined, we've got some denoising data because I forgot I'd added that as well. And we've got the emission and the ambient occlusion as well. So always remember that if you want some sort of new layer, you'll need to re-render your image. Okay, let's start playing around with this. The first thing we want to do is get rid of the noise, I think. So Shift A to add. The denoiser is under filters, but you can always search for it up here. But filter, denoise, and I'll want to add that in in between my render layers and my composite. So just in here. And I'm not seeing any update, and that's because I'm still on view layer. Let's go back to composite, because that's the composite here and I need to make sure the composite's up here. And there we go, the denoise has done its job. I can see the difference it makes by clicking on the node and pressing M to mute it. You can see it all noisy there, and then M to unmute it, and there's the denoise. Again, we've got all these other denoise options that we can plug in, but it's not going to make a lot of difference to this image because they're fairly basic materials. Okay, so what about that cool glowy effect that Eevee had? Well, I'll just make this a bit smaller in here and bring this across and we can add in a filter that does that. So shift A to add, again it's under filter and we've got glare. Now a quick question to you, where do you think I should put it before the denoise or after? Have a quick think about the implications of that. Okay, so the correct spot is afterwards. So if I slot it in here, I can just go over that noodle and left click and you can see the glare being added. We don't add it before because we want it to denoise the image first, so we've got no noise, and then add the glare. If we add the glare before, it will be denoising the glare. So you've got to think about these one after the other. Okay, it looks a little bit strange. It's all a bit streaky. We can change this from streaks to fog glow. And there's the update, and it looks quite nice. You can change the parameters in here. You can up the size a bit. I think you can only go to nine though. And you can change the quality, a lower quality actually, kind of increases the effect in a way but I think I prefer medium now I really want the glare just to affect the emissions and not really the metals so how can I do that well I've got my emit layer here remember we turned on emission down here in the light layers and the ambient occlusion well I can come out from this emit layer and bring that into the glare and mix the main image with the emission so first let's unplug the glare bring the main image back in there and control right click to cut that off so we're back to just the denoised image. Let's take a look at our emit. I can control shift left click and keep left clicking until we get down to the emit. Although I can't see it, I need to bring back my backdrop at this point. And there you can see the emit. And this is me control shift left clicking through and that's how you can kind of go through your image. So here's my emission. It's not noisy, so we don't need to denoise it. So we can go straight into the glare from the emit. I'll turn off the backdrop for now. So we've got our main image denoised and the emission with some glare. In fact, let's see what that looks like. Control shift left click on the glare and turn the backdrop back on. And there's our glowy glare. I'll turn that backdrop back off and now we want to mix these two together. I'll get rid of that so it doesn't get confusing. So you can press shift A and go to color and then mix. But there's a much quicker way to mix two nodes with the node wrangler. So I'll delete that and control shift right click and drag between the two, and that mixes them both together. Now all we're seeing is the emission. 
Let's see what's going on with this mixed node. At the moment it's a factor of 1 and that means the bottom image is coming through. If I mute this and press M, that will give us a factor of nothing because it's not there anymore. So this one's coming through the denoise image into the composite and that's what we expect to see. But as soon as I unmute this, with a factor of 1, we see the bottom image. And I can bring this down to a factor of 0 and we'll see the top. So this factor is basically how much of this bottom one you want to see. Now this is great, but it overtakes the other image and we don't want that. Well that's all to do with the type of mix, so this is called the blending option. And we can use what's called a lighten mode, which is one of these four, and that will just take the light image from this and add it to our main image with the denoise. So let's click on one of those lighten modes. When I tested this, the lighten seemed to do the better job. So we've got that glow now from our glow node using the emission, but it's not on any of our other objects. So it's working really nicely. This is without it and this is with it. So you can see the power of using these layers here and mixing these things together like this. Now the shadows in here are fairly nice as they are, but if we did want to kind of increase them and add some contrast, we can play with our ambient occlusion over here, or you can even just add a color node with a brightness and contrast or use your curves at the end. I'll show you that first, so I'll scroll out and just come across here and add in, so Shift A and go to the color section You've got lots of options here, color correction. Most professionals will use the RGB curves. So we'll chuck that in and we can increase the contrast, for example, by bringing down the blacks and bringing up the lights like this. And if I mute that with M, you can see the effects of that sort of contrast. You've also got this nice factor option here, which is how much it's going to influence. It's like that factor of the mix node there. So you can kind of increase the contrast slightly there. Not much difference at that level. There we go, a bit more there. OK, so you've got that option to add those sort of color effects in there. And there's lots of other filters you can use. If I go to Shift A and then Filters, you've got all these options here. Let's try some bokeh. There we go. Looks kind of cool. I can press Control X on this if I don't want it, and that will keep the connection. So this contrast is adding contrast to the whole image, but what if we wanted to just increase the shadows? Well, let's Control X that and use our ambient occlusion. So let's see what the ambient occlusion looks like first. So let's get our backdrop, Control Shift, left click, and go through to the ambient occlusion. And you can see it looks like this. Do remember that if you turn it on, you must re-render in order to get this image. Now, first of all, it is actually a bit grainy. So we'll want to put this through a denoise first and then mix it in. So I'll turn the backdrop off again, get rid of my viewer node. I'll duplicate my denoise here. So Shift D just there. Bring my ambient occlusion into that one. And let's just quickly see what that looks like. So bring the backdrop back and we've got that denoise there. Turn the backdrop off. Now we need to mix our new ambient occlusion with our main image that's got this glare effect in it as well. So control shift, right click and drag, and we've mixed those two together. At the moment, it's just showing us the bottom one, which is the ambient occlusion, going through the denoise, of course. So this time we want to use a darken mode for our mix. So let's go up to the mix option here. And here are our darken options. Multiply tends to be the best one. Let's see what that looks like. Click on that and we've got that effect there coming through and it's loads darker. So let's click on this and press M to mute. You can really see the shadows being intensified there. Probably a little bit too much, so we can bring that down to let's say 50% and that's a bit more like it. So there's our simple node setup. We've got control of our ambient occlusion with this slider here and we've got control of our glow with this slider here and obviously the options within here as well. So let's go from our original image to the composite. There's the original, and with all our nodes plugged in, there's our composite. So this will also work for animations because this is happening to every frame, and it doesn't add much at all to your render times. So that was a quick introduction to the compositor. Let me know if you've got any questions, thoughts, or if you want to know more about this, then do comment below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.